They call it the silent epidemic. I'm talking about osteoporosis, a systemic disease that causes your bones to become porous and therefore weak, making it more susceptible to fractures that can seriously hamper your quality of life. I'm joined by Dr. Darren Green, lifestyle and wellness expert Lisa Rally, and Dr. Lerato Masimola. Welcome to Doctor's Orders, guys. Lerato, who's actually at the risk of osteoporosis? Well, people have said that it's a disease of old women. Yes. It's not so. Old How, grannies. Old grannies. Who break you know. their hip. It's Is not that? so. There are several factors which can, you know, predispose one to having osteoporosis even at a younger age. But, you know, talking of grannies, when women get older, yeah. they are more at risk. You know, for women over the age of 45 are the highest at risk of osteoporosis. Yes. Because this happens because of the decline in the level of estrogens. You know, yes. when you reach puberty as a girl, estrogen levels go up to do two things. One, to assist with growth, because they stimulate the, the, the growth factors. But also on the bones themselves, it um, facilitates the closure of the growth plates. When you're born, when you're little, to allow the bones to grow, the bones are not fused. Okay. So there's space between you know, several bones so that there's room to grow. Yes. Estrogen then facilitates the closure of the, of the growth plate. And then secondly, with the bones, it decreases the, uh, the activity of the osteoclast and osteoblast. When the osteoclast and the osteoblast activity is slowed down, bones are allowed to become more dense. All right. And therefore, the risk of fractures or breaking easily is not there anymore. Okay, so why does it worsen after the age of 45? Because the estrogen goes down, okay. you know, with menopause. And th hence, the old grannies are more at risk. Okay. Um, but I mentioned earlier, there's other risk factors. And yes, like the men, I'm to, sure, also yeah. develop osteoporosis. Yeah, the perception that it's only limited to women is, is yes. incorrect. Other people at risk are Caucasian people. So, simple terms, white people with blue eyes, people that... More at uh, risk of osteoporosis. Yes. Correct. Yeah. And also people that smoke excessively, mm -hmm. people that drink too much alcohol, mm -hmm. and people that are sedentary and don't exercise enough. Mm -hmm. Yes. Besides that, the last one, quite obvious, being people that don't consume through their diet enough a supplementation in the form of calcium and vitamin mm. D, etc. Mm. So how does osteoporosis actually work? What's the physiology of it? So the process of forming bone and breaking down bo mm. bone is a dynamic process. Yeah. It's constantly in flow to keep the architecture of the bone basically living and strengthening it. Mm. So osteoporosis is the end result when that, that bone mineral density is so, yes. so poor uh, that we diagnose by using what they call a DEXA scan, yes. which measures the density of the bone itself, yeah. that it makes it porous and brittle. Yeah. Now, just to demonstrate that a little bit, I've actually got a science experiment over here utilizing okay. yeah. chocolate. chocolate. Mm. Okay, yeah. now try and yeah. concentrate yeah. on what, what I'm doing? actually Go going to do. Dibs. Right. <laughs> so in terms of, we've got the dark chocolate over here. As you can see, okay, it's quite dense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now on the spectrum of that, you move to... Uh, another type of chocolate mm. which has got a little bit more yeah, pores inside, mm -hmm. yes, okay? Yes, yes. And then as we move sure. down, wow. so that will it's be an extremely oster brittle, extremely bone. easy mm. to break, mm. and that's sort of a good uh, demonstration of what uh, oh, osteoporosis is yeah. actually. <laughs> now it's actually my chocolate, oh. thank you very much, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, what, from a lifestyle mm -hmm. point of view, what can people do to decrease the risk of osteoporosis? It's quite simple, actually. Yeah. Strength training equals bone building. Yes. So we need to put pressure on the muscles, and in turn that will build muscle and will put pressure on the bone. Yeah. So from the age of 25, we are losing 5% of our muscle mass every single year. So the only thing that we can really do to build that back up again is to embark on some kind of strength training routine. Yes. And the good news is that you can use your own body weight. You don't have to go do into a gym. You don't have to pay so. any gym fees. You can literally use your own body weight or some dumbbells at home or resistance band, squats, lunges, push-ups, crunches, every kind of exercise where it's your body weight against gravity is going to help to build up lean muscle tissue. Yeah. But not walking, not running. Okay, okay and later not on excessive in life, walking and running. Absolutely, no, no cardio. And when you get older, you can do things like rebounding and you can do Pilates, yoga, resistance band work. You don't have to stop just because you're getting to 30 or 40. Um, so from a strength training point of view and exercise, that's how we can increase our bone density. And then from a nutritional point of view, we need to increase our calcium and vitamin D in yes. our diet every single day. 
And that is not only your yogurts and your dairy products, but also low-fat cheeses, green leafy vegetables are really important. Um, and your nuts, things like chia seeds, spirulina. You find uh, calcium and vitamin D in many many varieties of foods yes. and the key is to make sure that you're incorporating mm. them every day and try mm. in every meal spending time in the sun yes, yes that's 15 facilitates. minutes a day out of mm. that you know 10 to 3 period yeah. and with spf yeah, yeah. difficult yeah. for people in the uk eh? <laughs> from a medical point of view how do we treat osteoporosis well, it starts with prevention, because yes. that's always better than cure. Prevention better than cure. Yeah, but I mean, if you are vitamin D deficient, you have to take a supplement, otherwise yeah. you're going to do damage in the long run. And it's, it's very difficult to try to reverse the damage once you're older. Um, you know, she mentioned calcium earlier, also please take a supplement, you know, to your diet if it's also deficient. Mm -hmm. And once, you know, it's set in and you're old, Movement is also very important. It's I mean, Lisa mentioned that. So you can work with physios, and I mean, if you, if, if the bones are very very brittle and there's no turning back, there are medicines also, like prescription medicines that you can um, be prescribed for and you can take to help to increase the bone density to yeah. prevent further fractures. But a lot of people forget also the fact that. By the time you hit 30 years old, the yes. thickness of and the quality of your bone by the age of 30 is actually quite a, a, a good indicator as to your risk of developing osteoporosis later on. Okay. So your nutritional factors and the lifestyle modification mm. that Lisa mm. mentioned, if you can hit those early mm. between your, your 18s and 30s, mm. it, it's going to stand you in good stead later on. So would you advocate actually going for a screening uh, at a certain age to, to see if you're at risk of osteoporosis? I advocate for women over the age of 40, 45, yeah. mm. just to check and see, you know, be, especially because at that age when you are starting to become menopausal, yeah. until the menopause, you know, is complete, you can take something if your estrogen levels are very low. Yeah. You can prevent... So after the age of 45, go yeah, for a bone, bone density, density scan, yeah. see where you stand, mm. and then discuss with your healthcare practitioner the way forward. Exactly. Thank you so much, guys, for a very, very informative discussion. A bone density scan is an advanced form of X-ray which measures bone mass or bone mineral content to determine if you have osteoporosis. Dr. Willie, please define bone density. Bone density is a measurement we use in medical practice uh, to determine whether a patient has osteoporosis and we basically measure the mineral content of your bone. How does this test work? It's a rather sophisticated X-ray test and uh, the X-ray beam is passed through four of your vertebrae and your lumbar spine and your hips as well and then results are calculated and plotted into a graph and a very simple test and safe test. When and why should we go for this test? As far as screening for osteoporosis is concerned and a patient who doesn't have any higher risk factors than the average person, we would recommend you be at scanned at about 60 soon after you've passed through the menopause and for a man we would recommend it probably at about age 70. Will you please take me through my test results? I'm very curious. The machine calculates what we call a T-score and a T-score it's basically a measurement relating your bone density to that of a healthy, young, 30-year-old adult. And then they calculate a standard deviation. And a T-score, anything from minus 1 to plus 1 is normal. Anything below minus 2.5 is osteoporosis. Your score is good. Uh, you have a T-score of minus 0.6 in your spine. And if we look at your hips, uh, your right hip is a T-score of plus 0.4, which is good, you above the mean for a 30 year old adult and the same for your left hip which is 0.6. So you have good bone density, you're at no risk in terms of the bone mineral content of your skeleton. So I've got my test results and they are normal so I'm quite relieved. But if you are concerned about osteoporosis and you want to be more informed, get a bone density test and become proactive about your health. <laughs>